In this session, I'll demonstrate how to use rich text formatting of your messages. It's important to understand that um, the, some of those features are also available in the previous versions of Outlook 2016. So let's click here and add a new message. So we want to send a new email and we type in the address here that we want to send it to. We have the subject in there. We type the message and of course you want to type this as professional as you can. And then here under the message options, we can go and format this with a variety of different ways, whether we want to change the font, whether we want to change the indentation and the other components here as far as the basic text formatting is concerned. Notice you have the insert tab and now we are working on the message. So here you could insert other components as part of this message. So we could insert an attachment. We can choose the latest files from that we have been working with, an Outlook item. So for example, an actual message that we have received in the past, simply choose it from there. We could insert a business card if we had one created, so the calendar. So today's availability, for example, I'm just going to send the availability as part of this message to a user. Could insert a signature and this will be part of my email signature. It's basically just my contact information. We can in insert what's called illustrations. And the illustrations, it's very similar to it, like in Word and Excel and PowerPoint, where you want to insert a table as part of your message. Just click here on table and then select however many columns and rows you want to use for this table. Once you have inserted the table or this object, notice that we have a couple new tabs that show up here. We have the design tab and the layout tab. Those are actually tools. They're referred to as the contextual tools, tools that show up in the context of what we are doing. In this case, we are working with a table and we have the table tools. Here we can change the design of this table and pick one of those designs instead of spending all afternoon formatting this. We can just use one of those styles from the table tools. You have all kinds of other options here in the style. You can change the shading if you want it manually, add a border and other types of things. Then you'd fill in the information as part of this table and you get the idea and then we'd still change the layout. We could add additional rows and columns. We could uh, distribute the formatting of each uh, cell here differently and just put the numbers in there. Once we move out of the table, go back to the insert tab and we could add pictures and the pictures could be from the web or wherever or from the computer. So if we had pictures here saved, we could do that from the computer, simply select it or we could go and insert pictures from online here and simply search here for Outlook. We can also change the type of picture that we want, whether it's clip art or an actual picture and click on it and click on insert. Now, remember, whenever you're copying and sending pictures from the web, keep in mind copyright as well. In this case, notice it's Creative Commons, which means we can use this giving credit to users. And you can learn about Creative Commons licenses over here. Notice it put here the Creative Commons aspect of it or the content. Notice now we have the picture tools and this is the contextual tools related to the pictures. We can format this picture with a simple click on it and make it much more fancier. There's a drop down and you can customize this further as well the text wrapping and additional options such as cropping the picture and things of that nature. By the way, the best way to learn about this stuff is simply to tinker with it. Just click on stuff, look as to what the options are on the ribbon and customize it that way. Additionally, you can insert shapes here. And one of the things with shapes is, is that you have to actually draw the shape in here then you can choose from here, you can choose styles for the shapes as well. And you can manipulate it however you prefer to change it. And all of this is part of an actual message that you are sending. Under the insert tab, notice you could even insert icons if you prefer to. 
and this is kind of new in Outlook 2016 with the latest version of it. So click on an icon, and it'll just simply add a fancy icon in here. Of course, to move them around, so you need to, whenever you're using this stuff, you want to make sure that the formatting makes sense. Of course, we are adding too many things at so this. It's going to be slightly busy, but you get the idea. You're under insert as well now in the, in the later versions of it. There are also 3D objects that you could insert, and these would be from the web. And you could make this even fancier as you're sending it to your users. Now, because this is part of the email, we just need to create some more space here and insert this object however you want. Notice the smart art. These are just predefined infographics to illustrate an idea. Of course, these would be more useful in Word or PowerPoint, but you can use them in Microsoft Outlook as well. So you could define a process and all that type of stuff. Notice how the text here adjusts automatically. And again, for the contextual tools, you have the various color schemes that you can apply to this object. Now, if we add more components here under insert, and then we go and add, for example, charts. Charts sometimes would be very helpful. Now, this is very similar to Excel. You can pick the type of chart here and then simply click on OK and then work with the data. Here you change the data type, so put the actual sales for each month. So let's say we have January and then we want to have the months. And then you have the online and on-site sales, for example. And if let's say you don't want to use one of those columns, you can exclude it by dragging this blue line. If you want to learn more about this stuff, uh, you can actually check out the Excel tutorial or the PowerPoint tutorial. So once we are done with the chart data, we can close it. And then if we click on the chart again, notice we have the chart tools very similar to contextual tools for other components that we used earlier. Additionally, as you're planning your messages and working on your messages under the insert tab, notice you can do screenshots and you can um, add smart art and even symbols and things of that nature. Now, the one other concept that I wanted to demonstrate to you is that um, for each one of those objects, whether it's an image or an object or text here, you can also insert hyperlinks. So if I select here these, this object hyperlink, I could link this to a tutorial on YouTube, for example, or, or some other object or a sales report on the website or a document or things like that. So in that case, simply select the object or it could be text, click here on link, and then I just post the address there. When they receive the message and they click on it, then uh, it will take them to that URL. Same way you could select part of the text, click on link, add the URL that you want to take them to. And notice now this is in blue. However, for the image here, the user most likely will not know it is clickable. So in a nutshell, that's how you create professional looking emails in Microsoft Outlook. It depends on the time that you want to invest in designing the message, how fancy you want it to look, and take the time to compose it. But again, the more professional it is, the better it is in the workplace. So once you're ready to send this, then you can click on send and the message will be delivered. Now, if I go here to my personal email and click on the sales report, notice that I received here my message and this is to an external system. This is the image. This is the hyperlinked option for the text that I had hyperlinked earlier. Take you to the YouTube channel. And then this is also hyperlinked as we did earlier. Then we have these images and smart art and charts that we sent. So this is to an external system even outside of Microsoft Exchange. So that's how you send the message out from Microsoft Outlook. If you wanted to check what you sent out, again, you go under the sent items and the messages that you send out will be listed in there. So stay tuned for the next session.
on sending a message using the address book in Microsoft Outlook. Thank you.